So let's check out Open Souza Tumbleweed. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I wanted to dive into a lesser talked about gym in the Linux world. And that's Open Souza Tumbleweed. While it might not be the first distro that comes to mind, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed offers a unique approach to rolling releases. So stick around as we explore its features, advantages, and any caveats you may want to keep in mind. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Okay, cool. So I'm at OpenSUSE.org, and this is where you can get your copy of Tumbleweed. And right here on the main page, you'll see they have desktop uh, selection if you want to select the desktop as well as the server selection. But what we're going to download comes with all of them. You just have to make that selection when you go through the installer. And I'll walk you guys through that in a little bit. And as you can see, it's actually four different versions of OpenSUSE. There's a Tumbleweed. Like I said, that's that rolling release, which is what we want to check out today. And then there's Leap. And right now, the current version is 15.5. And there's Leap Micro, uh, 5.4, and then Micro OS. And let's go right over to the Tumbleweed uh, page right fast. And this is where you get downloaded. And just a little background of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Uh, this distribution was born in 2014 and it takes a different route than its more conservative sibling, the OpenSUSE Elite, which we just saw on the other page. And Tumbleweed, like I said, is a rolling release, which means you always are at the forefront of software updates and kernel advancements, which is why I wanted to show this one. Most people, when they hear rolling release, they think of Arch Linux uh, when it comes to a rolling release distro. And I just wanted to do this to show you guys that there are other rolling releases out there. Now I've covered some of those on my channel. This is my first time actually looking at OpenSUSE uh, Tumbleweed. And just so you guys know, the rapid pace of updates can be a double-edged sword when it comes to all these rolling release distributions. While you get access to the latest and greatest software, it's important to note that there might be a shorter window for error corrections before releases. But just so you guys know, they do have uh, OpenQA, which is an automated testing tool, which ensures package stability. Additionally, the YAST module snapper provides a safer net by allowing you to easily roll back to a previous state in case of any issues. And that's one of those things with rolling releases. Sometimes you may run into issues with packages and certain things can break your system. Uh, and so this will allow you to roll back in case you run into those things. And just to add a little bit more information before we get to the install, this distro obviously comes with Suzy Zipper. That's the package manager for the system. And it has both a graphical and terminal based interface. And pretty much the out of box software lineup covers all your base essentials that you need for a system. And also one thing, you know, Suzy has been around for a very long time. So there's a big community behind it. And so there's a wealth of knowledge out there within the community. For instance, if you click up here on the right hand side of the website, you can see community. They have our RC channel, mailing lists, Facebook groups, Telegram groups and Reddit. But the default way I want you guys to look for solutions for whatever issues you may run into is the Wikipedia that they have. So you can get a lot of good information there. And then the documentation there as well is very detailed, the documentation for it. So, and those are the, the best places to get information on your system, uh, whatever issues you may run into. Now, let me show you guys how to download it right fast. So if we hit downloads uh, in, let me get this menu out the way, but it will show you guys all the ways to download it right fast and all the different versions. So you got the Intel AMD 64 bit desktop and laptop and server. That's the full ISO that has everything for you. You know what I'm saying? And then they have a 32 bit. They have an ORM 64 PowerPC server, uh, IBM Z systems and Linux one uh, PowerPC server. 
and Big Indian uh, PPC 64. So you can download whichever version you need. And if you click this down, this uh, down arrow right here next to download, this is where you wanna go on and get the, the mirror. And that way you can download it from the closest location to you for whichever one you decide to select as far as the ISO goes. Uh, and like I said, they have uh, a whole bunch of different ways right here at the top. They have a uh, US, so you can just click on one of US if you're in the US. And just so you guys know, the website kind of recognized my IP address and it picked the best mirrors for based on my IP address. So this will show up different depending on where you connect it from. But yeah, if we go back here, I just want to show you guys this right fast. They do have the checksum, so you download that to verify you're getting it from the proper location. Now there is a network image as well. And as you can see, it's 220 megabytes. It's very small because it connects and downloads everything for you. So just wanted you guys to know that. Okay, so let's hop over to my virtual machine. I can walk you guys through the installer. It's a little bit different from any of the other installers I've shown before. And that's another reason I wanted to show this one because it's super cool. It's detailed, you know what I'm saying? And it's not that difficult. It kind of walks you through it, but I'll walk you through it so you guys can see what it's all about. Okay, cool. So I have my virtual machine built and I just wanted to stop it here at the boot menu so you guys can see exactly what it wants to do. Uh, so you can boot from the hard disk. Let's say you need to upgrade. You can go down here and hit the upgrade. And there's also more and we'll go into there and that just shows you, you know, rescue and then you can boot a Linux system. You can check the installation media and then you can also do a memory test. Now let's go back and then go back to installation, which is what we want to do. And what I did to go back, if you guys ever got went under that more, all you have to do is hit the escape button. That'll take you back to the main menu. So let's go down and hit installation and it will bring up the installer directly and we can go down and get it installed on our virtual machine. All right, cool. So we booted into the installer and it'll go through and handle some of the first steps for you. As you can see over here on the left hand side, you'll see network auto setup. So it automatically uses the HCP connected to the internet. Uh, installer update, it went through the update of the installer and then repository initialization. So it initialized those repositories for OpenSUSE because it saw that we had a network connection. Now, if we didn't, it'll just skip those and go right into this page right here. And so the first thing is the installer. They do have a license agreement for OpenSUSE. Uh, you can read through this, check it out for yourself. But the language, you select your language. So mine's English and then your keyboard layout, all that on one page. Cool. And then you can also test, test your keyboard if you want to. Uh, I won't test it, but over here on the left hand side, you can barely see it behind my face, but that says license translation. And I only wanted to point that out for other people from different countries or whatever. You can translate that license. And then all you have to do is hit next and that'll go through. It'll check our connectivity again. And then it'll ask you if you want to activate those online repositories. So I'm gonna hit yes, boom. It'll activate all your online repositories. You can also uh, add more. So there is a main repository for uh, sources and there is a debug. Uh, you don't have to select the sources. I just selected it, but it gives you some information when you select on them. Uh, it tells you where they're actually coming from. So I'm gonna use the main three, which is fine. And then hit next and that'll only show up if you uh, or connected to the internet. If you're not, it's not gonna do that. And it's just gonna use the software from the ISO. And then it'll go through, it'll add those online repositories and then it'll initialize the installation portion of it. And now this is where you set up your system roles. So you have a couple different options up in here. Uh, you can set it up as a desktop environment and they have three different desktop environments. So XFCE, GNOME, KDE, Plasma. And you guys know, I'm gonna select XFCE. Now the generic desktop, to be honest, I don't know what environment it's actually gonna show, but it says generic desktop. So not sure what that is, to be honest. And I couldn't see anything under the help last, last time I looked at it, uh, but I'm gonna just leave it. I'm gonna just leave that open. It says, and it's just, yeah, this just kind of tells you what this is. So system roles. Uh, so the generic desktop, don't know what it is, to be honest. I don't know what desktop environment it's going to use or whatever. Uh, now server, 
that's obviously no desktop environment no graphical interface it's all gonna be terminal based so just like setting up a ubuntu server or setting up a uh, rocky linux server you know what i'm saying it's just gonna have that desk that terminal that pops up and you can install whatever you want from there and that's kind of like the minimalist setup if you want to let's say you want to install whatever you want on it as long as it's in the repositories then you could set up a server install whatever desktop environment you want if it's supported and get that up and running on here and then there is a transactional server this is the last option uh, basically it says like the server role so basically the server role up here but it uses a read only root file system to provide uh, atomic uh, automatic updates of the system without interfering with the running system so that's an option as well so let's go on hit next there boom now we're at the partitioning stage there is a guided setup uh, basically it automatically selected what it wanted to set up it's gonna use GPT and it's gonna create those partitions for the operating system. So you got your BIOS, boot partition, it's gonna set up the first partition, then the second partition, it's gonna be a root directory, uh, and by default it used BetterFS, so super cool to see. And then it'll create another partition for your swap. So it'll give me two gigabytes. I gave this virtual machine four gigabytes, so it gave me half of that in swap. So that's typically how you set up those partitions. So let's go down hit next. You can also go in and partitioning yourself. We're not gonna do that, I'm gonna use the default. Now the next step is gonna set up uh, the uh, NTP server or location, well, the network time server, you know, protocol server. Uh, set that up for you and it's gonna look at your location as well. Try to see if it could figure it out. If it can't, you can select what you want from here. So let's select Pacific Los Angeles for me. That way we can get this, you know, going on the location. Let's hit next. Now let's go down and create our user account. And you definitely want to do this. So uh, Josh, you know, give it a super strong password. Actually not, <laughs> but type a super strong password in here. And then also use this password for systems administrator. So it'll be a pseudo account, essentially. Uh, automatic login, I don't like that. So I always turn that off if I see it there. I already select it, but let's go down here next. And here's an overview of what it's actually gonna do through the install. This is not like you want to where going on and start installing the operating system in the background, uh, especially like on a server version, it does that. It'll just go down and start installing, installing stuff in the background. Uh, this will wait. It'll uh, outline everything that it's gonna do. This is basically a breakdown of everything. You got your booting, uh, you got your software that it's gonna install. Uh, system D target, so it's going to use it's in graphical mode. Your system hardware, security, and then network configuration. As you can see, it's DHCP host name. You know, I like this stuff down there, and it's going to use network manager. And then you can also switch to a different one. It says switch to Wix or disable this service if you want to of network manager. But let's go down and hit install. We're happy with everything we see here. Uh, you can go down and hit install, and then we wait and I'll let this thing go through and I'll be back when it finishes. All right, so as you can see, uh, the last thing, it'll automatically reboot. I just want you guys to see that, but it will bring up a countdown and it'll reboot up into the new system. All right, cool. So now we have a functioning installation of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And I just wanted to show you guys the Start up page that will show up every single time. Uh, unless you uncheck this box, it won't show up anymore. But yeah, here's the information you need. So they have a README documentation. You can get software from here. Uh, this will pop up every single time, but you can also go in here and find the software, which is that Yast software. And that'll open that up for you. And let me open it up for you right fast so I can show you guys a little bit of it. And this will actually open up the software.opensusie.org. You can go through, find whatever software you want. You know, from here, they have different categories, like so games, development, education, you know, all that good stuff. And also, let me just show you guys the software here as well. So if we type in our pseudo password, and that'll bring up the installer right there. So um, you can search for whatever software you're looking for, let's say, I'm not sure if Libre is on here, but let's try to find. Yeah, that's on here. Let's see if HTOP 
So let's uh, search for H top. And all we had to do is hit the checkbox right there. And then we can hit accept and that will go through and install H top for us on the system. And let's go down and hit finish and that'll close it out, but we don't need it anymore. But we can open up the terminal right fast and let's just type in H top right fast. Boom. So now we got H top on the system. So I hit quit. And then also while we're here, let's go down and look at the kernel version right fast. So you name dash A. That will let us know what kernel. So it's got that 6.4.9 kernel on the system. So super cool to see. And let's exit out our terminal. And then this is some more support. So for the XFCE desktop, so that'll show the GNOME, you know, help or the KDE help. And then you can also contribute to the project and then you can build OpenSUSE if you want to. Uh, also, they do have some customization that'll open up. You can go through, modify the system so you can change the layout. Uh, like for instance, right now it's just got that uh, board at the bottom, but you can set it up to where it has a dock. Boom, and it quickly sets it up for you. Uh, let's go back to the original or maybe let's check this one out. Yeah, there we go. Let's try that one. That one's cool. Uh, you can also set up your theme. Uh, and that's one cool thing about, you know, like these store pages, they'll get you up and going in no time. You know what I'm saying? You could change everything up or at least use some of the presets to set up certain things. Uh, you can check out, you know, the dark theme, you know, which is what I like. And I like to see that at water. Uh, I like that theme. Actually, I use that on my main system in XLC. Uh, that's the theme that I actually use. So super cool, super easy to set up. And then once you customize it, you know, you can close this out. It uses pipe wire based on what I've seen, but just show you guys a little bit more. Let's see, this is the little uh, software. I just open it up again, uh, just so you guys can see it. But yeah, check that out. You know what I'm saying? That'll allow you to install everything on the system. And actually, and this pulls up the control center. So as you can see, you know, software, you can add on product, add on products, uh, media check. So that'll check media, online updater, uh, software management, software repositories, just allows you to go through and make changes to the system. So this is kind of like that control center or system settings, uh, which you can go here and see a lot of the same and under settings manager you can click there and that'll show you all the settings for the system which some of that is under that control uh center that popped up and that pretty much wraps up our exploration of open tumbleweed with this rolling release model, Tumbleweed provides an excellent blend of the latest software and stability through the power of the YAS snapper. Now, whether you're a Linux or enthusiast looking to stay on the forefront of technology or a developer seeking a versatile platform, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed might just be the distro you've been waiting for. And so if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Linux content. And also share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. If you tried OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, I would love to hear that from you. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techie.